We're gonna work on one more mic, find the right button, and we'll get started. So again, just thank you for coming in today. Um, thank you for, I guess, being here the whole day. Um, this is the last breakout session, so you've made it. Um, you made it through the one o'clock. Avani's, hopefully that was just the food let down. I hope you got a little more energy for right now. Make it the last hour and uh, find this, um, I hope, very helpful, informative, um, something useful that to be able to use in your home. So um, I'm just going to first open us up in prayer, and then we will kind of go from there. All right? Great. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you. Um, I thank you for today. Thank you for everything we've already heard and all the aha moments and the little um, nuggets that you've just dropped into our hearts and our minds. Um, Lord, may we just be able to um, grasp those. May we learn how to be able to use one or two of those things um, and that we just feel a little sense of freedom. Um, not a guilt nor a shame because of what we've done in the past, but we can find freedom on what we're going to go to um, going forward because you're leading us there, Lord. You're leading our families, um, and you use families to provide hope to this world, Lord. And so may we be able to focus on that, how we can have hope-filled um, families um, as we look at ways we uh, lead our families, the way we discipline, and just going forward from there. It's in your son's name. Amen. Do you want to start? All right. We, I don't know if this is on. Can you guys? Now it is. Okay. <laughs> um, we'll introduce ourselves, talk about what we're going to talk about today, and uh, then proceed with that. So you guys, if you don't have a handout, there's a handout going around. Let me know if you don't have one. We've got more. Um, but I am Jen Dunaway, and this is my husband, Brett. I'll have him introduce himself first, and then I'll tell you about our family. Okay. So yes, I'm Britt Dunaway. Um, I am... Um, it says LCPC. What that means is I'm a licensed professional uh, counselor. Um, been in the field going on 14 years, somewhere around there. Uh, feels sometimes short, sometimes long, depending on the day. Um, but um, really enjoy it um, and enjoy working with kids, families, adults as well. And so um, that's kind of me professionally. Uh, are you doing the family part? Sure. We normally teach together. And we go back and forth. It's been a little while. It's been a little while. You're right. <laughs> uh, I'm Jen. Um, I, I do two different jobs. Well, of course, as moms, you do more than that. But uh, we have a commercial building that I manage. And then I also work here at the church as an executive assistant to operations. And then we have three boys. Uh, Everett is 14. Grant is 10. And Isaac is nine. Um, so we are right there in <laughs> with you guys <laughs> heading into the teenage years here. And um, what we want you to walk away knowing today is what are your values and how can you implement those in your family? And you might be thinking, how does discipline <laughs> connect with that? Um, but our statement was, you know, why is what I'm doing not working? Um, it's so frustrating as a parent. And so we want to give you a tool to process through some of that stuff. Um, but first we want to start out with Romans 7, 15 through 24. You're probably familiar with this passage. It says, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. Now, if I want, now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind, and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. All right. Did everybody understand that verse? <laughs> exactly. I still, like, I'm so glad she read it because I get confused. I get tripped up. Everything about that. But it's like, what are we doing? Like, I do what I don't want to do, but I do want to do something, and I, I, but I don't do it. 
I mean, that's what it comes down to. That's, you know, it's very confusing. And so I'm like, how do you, like, how do you work through this? How do you understand what's going on? And let alone try and do this all in a family perspective can be very confusing and very hard. And so I just want to be able to uh, show you maybe a, a small way to be able to start to figure this out, okay? And so what we're going to be talking about today is overall I call it the noticing me technique. And so we're going to work through this together and um, we can shout some things out or if you want to raise your hand, that's fine. Um, but first is looking at the pain, okay? This is the, these are the feelings. For those who can't see all the way up, this is going to be down here in the corner, the pain cycle or the pain quadrant here. What are some emotions that you feel, emotional pain feelings that you feel when you're parenting or let's say even discipline in that part? And if you need help, if you flip on the other side, there's this very colorful wheel here, okay? Find this very helpful. If you don't know what this is, this is a feelings wheel. Um, and how it works, at first it could be a little overwhelming, but you can look in the middle. And it starts with happy, surprise, bad, fearful, angry, disgusted, sad. And then you pick one of those, and then you go out, and you got a few more words. And then you can pick that word, and then you can go out a couple more. So, so we, say you have fearful. Then you pick, oh man, I'm really anxious. Anxious. Well, what kind of anxious? Well, overwhelmed, worried, maybe you feel helpless, right? You can travel out like that. And it just becomes more specific. Um, I really like sometimes with teenagers or even younger kids, and they're like, I don't know. What do you feel? I don't know. I go, okay, pick one. All right, in my office, I go, pick one. <laughs> okay, I feel bad. What kind of bad? And we just kind of walk from there. Um, so that can be kind of a helpful as we start to pinpoint it. So let's just start this with ourselves. What kind of pain feeling do you kind of feel? Or let me just say, maybe your friend feels. Maybe we can start with that. <laughs> Disappointed. All right, we would write that down there. Disappointed. Inadequate. In inadequate. Perfect. Frustrated? frustrated? Yeah. yeah, frustrated. Perfect. Inadequate, frustrated. Disrespected? Yeah. Yeah. Any others? Remorseful? Remorseful? Doing a good job. Yeah. Anybody else feeling stressed? <laughs> okay. Let's write that one down. Any others? I mean, we can pick a lot, but Well, let's start. Let's let's add, okay, with sad, let's add like maybe we could feel depressed at times. Disappointed, yeah. That could work as well. Right? There's a lot of different feelings that we can feel, right? Oh, anger? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can be honest. Okay, so those are some of the pain, right? Some of the pain that we all feel. We can all feel these at different times, different moments, depending on what that minute's like as we are in that interaction, okay? So now let's look over here, and the next quadrant up from that is called avoidant behaviors. Okay, when you first might think, yeah, when you think of avoidant behaviors, you might first think these are always negative. Well, let's look at it first as, let's not call it that. These are just, plus, these are positive or, and or negative behaviors. These are just, in a sense, behaviors we do because we're feeling this pain, okay? Because when we feel pain, right, we have to do something with it because who wants to sit there and feel the pain continue to increase, 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 right? It gets too much. So we need a behavior to try and lessen the pain, okay? So let's name some of the things we try and do. Behaviors. What? Shut down. Shut down. Yeah, that's a common one. Mm-hmm. 
subject. Change the sub subject. Yep. Keep busy. Keep busy. Yeah. Exercise. Exercise. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Any other? Anything? Anybody shout when they feel the pain because their kid's not listening? Okay. That's one. And again, these aren't always, you know, don't think positive or negative. Just shout out the behaviors. Whiskey. Whiskey. There we go. <laughs> That's an awesome. I was going to add that. It's funny. When I first. What would you like me to write? Uh, drinking. Okay. It was funny. I, when I first did this, um, it was in a training that I had, I sat through. And, uh, you know, it's a group of therapists and they're all like, exercise and do, 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 do. And then she was like, let's be honest. Y'all overworked in 2020 and y'all started drinking too. And we're like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, there's some of that going on too. So, right, we overwork. Anything else? Scroll on Facebook, social media, shop, Amazon shopping. Yeah, okay. You know, we want to feel a little bit better, right? Yeah. Um, eat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chocolate mm, at the end of the day. Yeah. Carbohydrates. <laughs> no, but we could. We should. Cry. Anybody got a phone a friend they call and talk to? Right? That can be one. Yeah. Naps, sleeping, <laughs> yeah. Netflix, Netflix binge, yeah. Mm hmm. Right? Especially when you couldn't go to movie theaters, anything like that. I mean, even hanging out with friends, right? Oh, man, I'm so glad we got to meet this week. You can't believe what it's like in my household or what my week was like, right? Yeah. Anything else? I always like it. This list is always longer than this one, just FYI, as we go, because this is the one we're really good at. And they're not all bad. Like I said, this isn't a, this isn't a plus. We're not looking at this as plus or minuses. These are just what we do. Um, yep, I was going to say be quiet, but that's quiet, like we'll shut down, you know, come home, you're just quiet, you're just not going to interact. Oh, what about screen time? Just say, you know, okay, kids, go play your, I'll say it, Nintendo Switch, go play your video games, go watch your movies, YouTube, it's all right, right? Okay, all right. Uh, anything else? As we go from there. Okay. So, right? Pain, avoidant behaviors. Okay. If we get, this becomes the stuck cycle if we keep doing this over and over and over again. Okay. I don't know if you were in the previous one with what Jeff was talking about in that one. I know maybe some of you were. This is what he was talking about. Right? This is the avoidant behavior. This is how we're dealing with our pain. And if we just keep doing that over and over and over and over again, it's not working. Right, The pain continues to keep coming up. And we do the avoidant behavior, but the pain's still there. I like to call that the ibuprofen cycle. Right? How long does ibuprofen last? Four to six hours. And if the pain is high enough, you need to take some more ibuprofen. But you're not dealing with the pain. Right? So... Then, so if we can stay and we can look at that, but let's look at what type of values do we want to have in our family or even with ourselves, right? If, if the pain was knocked down, I always like to say that if pain was knocked down by 50%, if our disappointment, inadequate, frustration, disrespect, remorseful, stress, depressed, anger, anxiety, all that pain, if, if we could knock that down by 50%, and it felt manageable, manageable, what values would we do? What values would we, uh, let's use this in this part, in, in this family, what values would we have as a family? Respect. Respect, okay. Gratitude. Gratitude, okay. Any others? 
The golden rule. The golden rule. Treat others as you want to be treated. Yeah. Any particular values maybe about, you know, how you want them, uh, how to relate to God, you know, that we, we're going to worship God or we're going to have this connection. Uh, what about any of the, like, mile markers that, uh, like, Chris said, you know, that they talked about in, right before lunchtime? Was anything popped up? Nap for you. Serving. Okay. Right. Let's see. So let's see. We have how they should treat others. What about how they communicate with each other? I know we have respect, but is there any like maybe a little bit more? or even how you communicate with each other, right? We could talk about communication. Yeah, go ahead. Compassion or grace. Yeah, compassion, grace. Honesty. Okay, we have three boys in the house, so if one hits you, does that mean you hit them back? Like, no. Like, we're not gonna do physical aggression, right? Towards, towards your brother. Um, things like that. What? Forgiveness? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Okay. Now, what about even, I know you guys have, this is an area. I just want to say, you know, we're, we're at number, right, last session of the day. And the values, you might be sitting here thinking, we just been sitting under a fire hose of information. <laughs> Honey, I don't know what we're gonna like pick or choose. We got a whole bunch to do, all right? This is where you just wanna go, okay, what are one or two values that, I wanna, that we wanna start working towards in our family, okay? To go forward. So we have a good list here. Um, yes, we could do more, but don't get overwhelmed with that. It's a good way to list it, but don't, don't get overwhelmed. Don't try and go forward with all of it, okay? So the next one we don't have filled out is the committed action, okay? If you are going to focus more on your values on a day-to-day -day basis, what would be some committed actions and or actions would you start to do? Again, it's a small, it's, it can be small. Talk about a kindness each day. Yeah. Yeah. Like leave space for act of kindness, right? And I think intentional communication. Intentional communication, right? With each kid or with kid? Yes. we back to Prayer. Prayer. Oh, daily prayer. Yeah. Daily prayer before bedtime is common. Dinner. How about dinner? Dinner, okay, yeah. Like, like together, not just, we all, we all eat dinner. I mean, somewhere, somehow. But yeah, like that. What happens if a committed action was like, one, yeah, one night we have dinner together, but one night's the movie night. So we're all together. Like our 14-year-old last night did not want to watch Encanto. I mean, he had the chance to watch Spider-Man like sat, three different times. Yeah, I think so. He sat on the couch with a blanket over his head <laughs> for about five minutes. And we said, we need to get it off. We like you. <laughs> we want to spend time with you. Get out so of your room. Yeah, yeah. After a little bit. After a little bit. So, yes. Those committed actions. Oh, good. Right? Any others? Put the cell phone down right Yeah, cell phone, right? This could be one where we start looking at what, how's media going to be in our household? And then, okay, think about it this way. If media is going to start to decrease in our household, right? Well, okay, that just mean, doesn't mean I just went to a conference and decided <laughs> just because 
I, I know Jason. Just because Jason Lee said, let's cut it down, that's the reason why I'm making this choice. Because how long will that last, right? A week, two weeks? You're really good if it lasts a month. Um, but then it just it will start to go away, right? But if I have a value, right, that says media is not going to take over your life and we're going to be intentional about talking with each other, I'm more likely to gonna stick with that. And I'm gonna remind myself, you know what, I need to do that. I need to go forward, you know? That's, that's, our, that's my value, and that's gonna be our fam- value as a family. Because we're talking about, right, our values. Because our values move us for, uh, farther ahead. And I always like to talk here, okay, what happens in January of every year? <laughs> Resolutions, right? I like the one with the gym, working out, right? So our committed action, our pain, right, is what we might feel a little overweight. We just ate a whole bunch of food during the holidays. Avoidant behavior, right, is like, oh, man, I really, I need to stop this. I don't like the way I look. But then I'm like, you know what? I don't go to the value section. I just go to the committed action, and I go, I'm going to work out today. (laughs) This is going to feel good and I do it for like a week, maybe, maybe a day, I don't know, and it stops. And it's just because we, it's a committed action and we have nothing behind it to go forward. So do you wanna, oh, so let me share one more thing and then Jen has a, like a real life experience. You're gonna do the Valentine's Day thing, right? Okay, so the last one is, okay, why is the words towards and away here, okay? That is important. Because all I'm asking you to do after you go home today, and I know you've been sitting through, like I said, all these breakout sessions. I want, as you walk through this, I just want you to go and say, am I making decisions? Are we as a family making decisions that are away from our values or towards our values? And that's all, that's all I'm asking you to do is to go, hmm, let me notice me right now, and I might be feeling some pain, but am I going to make an away decision or a towards decision? Now, okay, if, it, if it's I'm feeling pain and the eating might make me feel good immediately, okay. But if I went back to that the next night and the next night, that's not a good intermediate decision, let alone not a long-term decision right? So I need to pick something that's going to be out of my values. Now, don't get me wrong. You might need to work on some behind the, see what the root is. Why do I keep going back to that to get some freedom? But I need to get some values to make sure my actions and my, you know, and my values are matching up so I can go forward. So just to be able to ask, am I moving away or towards as you start making that? And so, all right. Ahead. So I'll give you guys a real life example. So it was Valentine's Day, like what, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. It's a Monday night. Usually on Monday nights, we have drum lessons for our oldest. It's like six o'clock. Britt gets off at six. So dinner time's like really late. Um, we happen not to have drum lessons. So I'm like, okay, it's Valentine's Day. Uh, we had some steaks. Britt and I were going to have them. I'm getting them ready. And it's five o'clock. So usually on a, on a weeknight, he's off at five o'clock, gets home about like 5.30. So I start making dinner. I'm like, it's Valentine's Day, and I'm making this nice dinner. And it's like 5.30, and I haven't heard a word from him. And I'm getting mad. <laughs> I'm getting mad because he's not coming home yet. He's not texting me back. I'm making Valentine's dinner for him. He should be thankful that I am making Valentine's dinner. And so... Uh, in the process of making dinner, like smoke starts filling the house, like the smoke alarm's going off, I gotta open up all the windows. Like I am not burning something, it's just smoking. So I'm frustrated with that. Um, the boys are playing, uh, every once in a while, you know, like got some fighting going on, we've got a dog. Um, so all this stuff going on. And I'm mad. <laughs> I finally realized, oh, it's Monday night and he's not gonna be home yet. Like, he's supposed to be home at 6.30, not 5.30. So he does have a chain of texts to him. I'm like, are you okay? Where are you at? 
And then I realized it's 530 and he's not supposed to be here. And I texted him back and said, sorry, I forgot it's Monday. So I'm like, okay with that. And I'm processing, but I don't know. So if when guys... I read those texts, when I got to about 610, <laughs> when I was done, I was like, oh, I think I might know what I'm walking into. Because uh, it was like, <laughs> where are you? You're not home yet. What are you doing? And then, <laughs> luckily, I couldn't see my phone during yeah, that whole yeah, hour. Exactly. And so I was like, 16, she, she had texted back, sorry, forgot it was Monday. I was like, okay, good. Whew. But I already knew the tension level had been high before I even walked in the door. I'm like, oh. Valentine's and Day. I knew I was doing this, but I was processing. I don't know if anybody else spirals. Like, you think, my husband's not home. Something's happened to him. He's in the car wreck. Oh, no, he's not coming home. And I'm like, hold up. Just a minute. Like, you don't know what's going on. Just take a breath. And then I realize what's going on. So I'm like, calming down from that. Um, and then I finally get the boys' dinner ready. They, they did not want steak, which was perfectly fine. Um, so I had their dinner ready. I thought, they can eat, and then I'll wait for him. And so I, yell, I say, hey, boys, dinner's ready. And then I hear fighting. Like, I hear, like, I don't know what it was, but it just made me so mad. Like, I just wanted them to come. I wanted them to be at the table. I wanted it all just to be fine. And I just snapped. Like, I yelled. And I walked up to them. And as soon as I did, our nine-year-old, his face just, he went... <sighs> And I immediately felt that. And I was like, you messed up. Like, I just, I knew I was doing it. I knew that I got angry. I I got a little stressed out. (laughs) I reacted by shouting. Um, And I thought, no, I I need to ask their forgiveness. I need need to tell them I messed up. And so I I told Brett, I can't remember if it was before or after. We prayed for dinner. (laughs) You know, you get mad and then you're like, let's pray for dinner. Um, (laughs) So I'm like, no, I want them, I want to ask their forgiveness. I need to let them know I made a mistake and I want to enjoy our time together. So I said to them, I said, I'm very, so I'm sorry. I yelled at you guys. I shouldn't have. I was just getting frustrated with you guys fighting. I was angry because, um, you know, dad's not home yet, but I know that's fine. Um, and after that, they were okay. They didn't hold anything against me. But I was able to look at this, seeing, okay, what am I feeling? How did I react? Um, you know, what value did we want to instill in our, in our kids? And my action was, I'm going to ask for their forgiveness and spend that time together with them. So don't expect to be able to do this. If you haven't already been practicing in this, don't be able to go, you know, I'm going to do this great the very first time. Okay. <laughs> Take some time. Practice. That's why we gave you this handout um, to be able to go, okay, like be able to write it out, be able to recognize what the pattern is. So, you know, you can start not getting in the stuck cycle, but getting in this cycle. Because one question I didn't ask was, how do you think you'd start feeling if you started focus, focusing more on your values and then your committed actions? Like, how are you going to feel? Happy, right? Probably more of the yellow feelings on the feelings wheel, right? If you want to go back to that. And that Playful, change of mindset when you're, you're not thinking about your kids and what action am I trying to correct in them? Right. What value am I trying to instill? Right in them and that as for a parent makes a huge difference in my mind of how I'm going to react to them um you know it's not their behavior it's what do we want to teach them so think about it with lying right if you have a kid that lies right that will cause you pain and so the avoidant behavior could be I'm going to lie some more for the kid so being able to teach them okay what's the value right if we keep do you still keep feeling good every time I catch you in a lie well, no, I don't, I, you know, and you keep getting in trouble. Like, is that, is that really the cycle you want to keep going? No, I know you'll mess up. That's all right. We'll, we'll fix it. But what kind of value do you want to have? I want to be honest, you know, and so I'm going to try and tell the truth and then I'm going to feel better, right, to go, and we'll have to travel the cycle over and over again until our brain starts to catch it, but to be able to get towards that. 
But you have to start with noticing you, noticing me, what's going on, and put your put yourself in that noticing Brit. So, well, we left some time. We've got probably 15 minutes or whatnot, but 10? Oh, 10. Okay. Um, do you have any questions you'd like to throw out? Um, would like to be able to just leave some time for that. Or something that wasn't clear. I know it's a big room, but we're all parents. We can all ask these questions. Yes. So at what point did you sit down with the family and decide these are our parents? So, um... No, as she would say. I would say when we first started our values together, our family was younger, so we had to create the values. Um, and um, so I mean, the, right now they're kind of unspoken. Like we've talked about it, right? But it's not like we have a list on our wall that no. says we're going to teach our kids about honesty and respect and loving each other. Um, but a lot of times, when we do correct uh like a fighting thing um we say like you're you're um a protector like we want our kids to be able to protect and guard each other like in a you know in a good way and so we say you're their protector you're not you're not there to hurt them you're their protector right oh my 14 year old cannot sit on my 10 or 11 year or like 10 or 9 year old right like you're gonna break your brother like you you know that's one way that's a protector way um, but you do, you say, okay, we know we can speak, you know, into them during those times. Like, let's be respectful. You are a person who's able to respect others. So let's use that language, you know, and that's why we are wanting you to change why you're wanting to correct. So you can sit down if you have older kids, right? You can start asking what kind of values should we have together as a family? and start, you know, kind of talking about those values to be able to do that. But some of our values can be too. We've had a value of just having fun. So, you know, at times when it feels like we haven't been having fun in the household, we are just like, okay, we need to have some, you know, fun time. And we'll, we'll try and pick out a fun activity um, to be able to do um, as a value. So, Yes. So how do you deal with the values that you have in your family and in your house, but the values that they are seeing in the school or outside our house and our family are different? Yeah. We have an eight-year-old mm -hmm. that knows exactly our values, and he obeys by it, but the moment he's out in the house, his wife is not my son. Okay. <laughs> Could you guys hear that question? So that question was... Um, that how do you handle it when the kid knows, or in this case, her son knows the values inside the household, but then goes outside the household and is like, not my son, like doesn't know the values um, at that time. Uh, I would say if they go to the same place over and over again, then to be able to, like if it was a daycare or something, like to be able to say, uh, you know, these are our values at the home, like respect um, to be able, how we talk to each other, how we treat each other, um, to be able to have those matched up, you know, if that can be similar, um, that could be very helpful, but to be able to let him know, you know what, these values, I want you to carry those out, out into the community. And for eight year old, I would just say you're planting the seeds at that time and being able to reward when you see those things going on. You know, even if it was in the beginning, if it's bad 90% of the time, but you see that one time, you're like, hey, great job. You picked up that pencil. Like <laughs> reward that really quickly um, to be able to, to do that so you can start seeing the change. Um, so if you can have any eyes or ears out there that can be on your side, that's where that could be very helpful. Um, let alone, you know, any report back and forth. So, yes. Well, you get, I get some report from the brothers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, those brothers. I know that the parents are actually changing when he is with friends. Oh, okay. Not necessarily, like, I'm talking about actually lying. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Outside. Okay. I'm not catching him. Right. Okay. Or I'm not seeing him doing good in the moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would say keep telling him these are the values you take with you. And then I don't know where he's going. Like if it was a daycare or if it's a friend's house or something like that. So then it's, you know, um, that he needs to take those with him. But then if he gets a report from another parent or someone else that he did a good job, then to be able to say, yeah, you know, good job right then and there. Um, the next, oh, I had another thought. Let me get back to that. Go ahead. I was going to say, what would you say about um, if you hear that report and say, hey, the brothers were talking to me about this happened. You know, can you tell me more about it? I don't right. know if you've had a chance to do that, if that would be helpful for him to tell you mm -hmm. what he thought. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. Anything else? Anybody else want to share anything? Question? Okay. Um, yeah, that's about all I have. If you want to ask questions more individually, I, we'll be standing up here for a little bit longer. If you do ever want to like contact me, um, I do have my cards over there uh, with my email address and um, so ways to contact me. Um, so you can look that you can grab one of those or even look me up online um, to be able to do that. So thank you again for coming today. And um, thanks. Thanks. We enjoy this. Oh, yeah. I think the closing session is at 245 back in the student center. Yep.